everyone. My name is Gabby and it is February 2020. We have made it through the first full month of the new decade, of the new year, so I hope your January 2020 went well, but I figured that the perfect way to usher in February, the month of love, would be to do the lover book tag. I will be leaving the original tag linked down below if you want to go and check it out. I'm super psyched to be doing this tag because I haven't talked about books a lot on my channel recently because I've been in the biggest slump, but now for the first time in my entire educational existence, I don't have to take a literature class, so I'm free to read whatever the how I want and I feel like I'm finally starting to read again and it's the most fulfilling feeling in the world so I'm super psyched to dive into this tag and get started I have a lot of questions to answer so we're gonna do just that question number one is I forgot you existed a character you would love to forget or wish didn't exist so I'm actually picking a book that I read from my literature class last semester and that is disgrace by J.M. Cotesi I don't even know the main character's name in this book but I will tell you some things that he does that make him an absolute disgrace. Within like the first 50 to 75 pages, the main character who is a college professor rapes one of his students, gets fired for it, shows absolute indifference, just does not care at all what his punishment is, what the consequences are, shows no remorse, doesn't apologize, just has a zero cares in the world, and then he decides to go and live with his daughter and the first description you get of her is like of her breasts. So he's objectifying his daughter and it's just weird and creepy and uncomfortable and I think that's all that needs to be said about that character. Moving on to track number two, which is Cruel Summer, which is my favorite track off of Lover, if you can't tell by the shirt, and that is your favorite summer romance book. This was an easy choice for me. I picked What If It's Us by Becky Albertalli and Adam Silvera. I love this book so much. I love both Becky and Adam. The fact that they collaborated on a cutesy, summery, contemporary romance novel was like everything that I wanted and more. The fact that this book is inspired by Dear Evan Hansen made it even better for me. I definitely need to reread this one this summer because I don't remember a lot about it to be real honest but I just know that when I read it that it made my heart so happy I was so excited about this book the minute it was announced I remember finding out that Adam was gonna be writing the last chapter of this book and it gave me so much anxiety because I was like this book it's it's gonna crush me and I mean it did but it was beautiful and wonderful and it just oh it was so good and there's hope for a sequel potentially which makes me so happy if we don't get one I will be content to read what if it's us forever and ever and ever but that sequel, if it happens, I'm gonna be so pumped and I will be super psyched to get my hands on it and hopefully Adam Silvera will not be writing the last chapter this time. Moving on to track number three, which is Lover, your favorite OTP romance. So I had to pick an oldie but a goodie and choose Wesley M. Buttercup from The Princess Bride by William Goldman. I mean, there's no better couple. The whole point of this story is the fact that love can defy death, that it can defy all the odds. Whatever force is put in its way, love will triumph. There, there's nothing better than that. I also love the movie so much. It's hands down one of my favorite movies of all time. The book is just as fantastic. I mean, we would not have the movie without the book. I'm grateful for that. Personally, I enjoyed the movie a little bit more, but I also saw the movie first. So if I had read the book first, who knows what my experience would have been like. I think a lot about Carrie Elwes and the way that he played the Dread Pirate Roberts and the way that he played Wesley, and he just did such a fantastic job bringing that character to life. Robin Wright did such a phenomenal job bringing Buttercup to life. She's so fierce and independent and strong, and I just, oh, I love those two characters so much. I love everything that this story represents. I love the fact that it's just so timeless and it deals with so many different themes and ideas, but that romance is at the heart of the story and Wesley and Buttercup are just, oh, they're so precious. And I, I like, I couldn't think of a more perfect set of characters to pick to answer this prompt. Moving on to track number four, The Man, which is another favorite off of this album, and that is your favorite strong female lead. I feel like you could pretty much pick like any YA female protagonist and satisfy the question because we do not have any any weak female leads. All women are strong. But to answer this prompt, I decided to sort of dig through the archives a little bit. I wanted to pick characters or books that I haven't really talked about a lot in this channel. So I decided to choose Cress from the Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. I read the series almost a year ago, which is crazy. And Cress was hands down my favorite character from the series. Cress was also my favorite book from the series. So I figured that if I was going to be talking about the Lunar Chronicles, she would be a good character 
the pick. One of the reasons why I like Cress is because she doesn't necessarily fit the typical definition of what we think is like a strong female lead because like a good character that would pop to mind that feels like it would very much fit this prompt would be like Selena Sardothian from Throne of Glass. And she 100% fits that definition, but I love the characters that are strong in other ways and the fact that she's able to hack things that she's super intelligent she also just loves so deeply her and Thorn together make my heart so happy and it makes me like want to go and reread the series right now but I can't because I don't have the books with me Cress also just her wonder and her awe of the world she's also just super determined the way she defies the people who tried to keep her captive like she's so strong in so many other ways that don't really fit the traditional definition of strong and so that's why I wanted to bring her up for this prompt also the song that Taylor Swift created is just so fantastic. Ugh, I'm just feeling all these things now. Moving on to track five, which is The Archer, a fantasy world you would be willing to live in. So here's the thing. In most fantasy worlds, there's a very good chance that you're going to die because all shit goes to hell in fantasy worlds. Like, I can't think of a single fantasy world where things are just good, you know? Like, it takes to the end of the series before things get good, and then you ultimately have to assume that things are gonna get bad again because that's just that's kind of how things work. A fantasy world that I'd want to live in that I think would genuinely be interesting and one that kind of I feel like subverts the typical expectations for this question is an absolutely remarkable thing by Hank Green. So in that story, a whole bunch of Carls descend down to Earth. Humanity like does not know what to do because these things are everywhere and it's like what do we do? What how do we like they're just they're just here? Do they have like a conscience? Like what are they made of? Like all of these questions. And I think it would be super fascinating to live in a world where there's suddenly this thing that just appears and you like you don't know what to do. Like what does humanity do to answer that question? It just feels like the most plausible fantasy world that our Earth could foresee. And so for that reason, I think it would be really interesting to experience this in real life. And I think Hank does a really good job of sort of simulating that within his novel. This book also has a sequel that is coming out this year that I'm super excited about. So I figured that this would be a good way to bring that up as well. I thought the story was so well written. I thought that there was lots of really interesting things that were brought up. And this book almost made me like Hank Green's writing more than John Green's writing, which like I don't want to compare them because they have two completely different writing styles. It just made me really happy that Hank finally put out a novel and that we got to see his writing and got to see his thought process and how he tells stories and oh this book was so good and it made me like genuinely intrigued as to like what a world would be like if something like this descended down to earth so I would want to experience that I think that would be kind of cool to sort of see what the human race would do and I feel like it would be the least likely scenario in which I would die or get killed so moving on to track number six I think he knows which is another one of my favorites off of this album I have so many favorites off this album but again like this is another one and that is the most loved book on your shelf. I decided to pick my signed and personalized Cassie Clare books. So I have the entirety of the Infernal Devices in hardcover signed by Cassie Clare. And then I have all of the Dark Artifices signed and personalized by Cassie Clare. I don't know if Lady Midnight is personalized, but I know that Lord of Shadows and Queen of Air Darkness are signed and personalized. And Lady Midnight may just be signed. But those books mean a lot to me because the Shadow Winter Chronicles has become like my favorite Y series on the planet. We can talk a little bit more about that in a few questions but those books mean the world to me because to get to meet my favorite author to be able to have her sign those books to be able to have them sitting on my shelf like I couldn't ask for anything better her series always makes me happy I continually go back to those books time and time again and so naturally they're, they're gonna be the most cherished books on my shelf if I wanted to subvert the question and not actually talk about a legitimate book I would probably pick my journal for this it's technically a book because it has pages in it and I have a whole bunch of different people that have signed it Cassie Clara signed it and and I've talked about the journal a few times on my channel, but I've never done a flip through for it because I like never get to finish it in time. So I'm thinking that when I maybe finish the entire journal, I like just to have one big ass video where I just flip through some of the pages because also some of them are kind of personal. So I that's where also I got to the point where I was like, eh, maybe I don't want to do a flip through. So I was kind of like mm, on that, but those, those are books that I cherish in the door. I love all the books on my shelf, to be honest, because they're all stories that make me happy, but like that's what we're going with to answer this question. Moving on to Miss Americana and the Heartbreak Prince which is your favorite forbidden romance. I love the symbolism in the writing with Miss Americana. It's just such a brilliant song. And so I wanted to pick a story that I really loved that I thought made some really intelligent discussion that also included a forbidden romance. And that is the Renegade series by Marissa Meyer. So Adrian and Nova, who are the two main characters in the series, are absolutely forbidden lovers. So if you don't know what the Renegade series is about, you have the Renegades and you have the Anarchists. The Renegades are superheroes, the Anarchists are villains, and essentially that they're they're opposed. Nova is an anarchist. 
Adrian is a renegade. Nova goes undercover and pretends to be a renegade so that she can try to take them down because she wants revenge for the death of her parents and her little sister that were killed by a villain gang and the renegades weren't there to stop them. She She's out for blood and that's, that's where this whole series begins and you start to see that Nova and Adrian begin to fall in love but it's like they're from two different worlds and what could they possibly do? This, this is a world, this is a romance that it can't be. The slow burn of their romance is just, oh, it's so fantastic and so well written. That discussion of like, what do you do if you're in love with someone who has different beliefs than you? Comes from a family that doesn't agree with things that you agree with. How does that work? And it's so brilliantly written. I like love Marissa Meyer. I think she's become a new auto buy author for me. I wish that I had read her books sooner, but I'm glad that I'm getting around to them now because they're fake. Her books are fantastic and Renegades is, is it's amazing. I think I personally liked Renegades more than Lunar Chronicles, but both are both are fantastic. And I'm so glad that I'm finally starting to read her books and Adrian and Nova, fantastic. Moving on to Paper Rings. And that is a book lover you would marry. So I'm trying to pick new characters. And so I figured a really topical one to pick for right now would be John Ambrose McLaren from P.S. I Still Love You. We all know that the Netflix adaptation of this book is coming out very soon. Jordan Fisher is playing John Ambrose McLaren. So all of us now are like, Team John Ambrose McLaren, but you wanna know what? Where were all of you? When I was Team John Ambrose McLaren, I have been Team John Ambrose McLaren from the very beginning. I remember I listened to audiobook of this series a few summers ago, and I think it was like, around the summer before the first adaptation came out on Netflix. So I don't know, I, like dates, man, time, who knows. But when I was listening to audiobooks for the series, I was hands down Team John Ambrose McLaren. I was never a Peter Kavinsky fan, but I knew she was gonna end up with Peter Kavinsky in the end because like, of course she does. But you wanna know what? Lara Jean can have Peter Kavinsky. I will take John Ambrose McLaren because he's the boy from Model UN. He's nice, he's respectful. I just, I, what is there not to love there? Like I just, Peter Kavinsky does a lot of shitty things in the series. And I just not a fan to be real honest and also like if we're talking about Noah Centineo There are like everyone was in love with him and people turned against him just as quickly It was like some whiplash. It was insane But here we are and I'm, I'm still team John Harris McLaren to this day guys I've, And I've, I've always been don't know where you've all been But yeah, here we are and I think most people are still team Peter Kavinsky and like that's fine But next question is Cornelia Street a book set in a place you would love to visit or love visiting I decided to pick another series that has its conclusion coming out this year and that's the Diviner series by Liva Bray. So this series takes place in 1920s New York City. I would love to visit 1920s New York City for just like a few days to get an idea of what the vibe was like, what the atmosphere was like. And the book series does a really good job of that. Liva Bray does such a fantastic job of incorporating all of the historical elements that were going on in the 1920s into her series and it feels like you're actually there. And it's made this series so much fun to read. I am so hyped. For the conclusion, it feels like I've been waiting forever for it, but I can't imagine people who like started reading this series when it first came out getting that conclusion now. Like that's, that's insane because the Diviner series is like a classic booktube novel. That's it's crazy, but I'm so just so stoked to see how this world wraps up and I would, I'm psyched for more 1920s New York City references. It's gonna be a great time, especially because it's 2020. Like no more perfect time for the conclusion of this book to be coming out. I'm stoked. The next track is Death by a Thousand Cuts, and that is a book that made you into a puddle of mush. So I'm gonna be picking a book that I read and reviewed for Teen Reads, and that is Meet Me in Outer Space by Melinda Grace. So this book follows the main character, Edie, and she has a learning disorder that has made her struggle in her French class, but her professor isn't necessarily the most accommodating of her struggles, so she ends up reluctantly going to her TA to get help and be tutored and they start to fall in love but then it sort of becomes this conflict for Edie as to whether she should pursue like her career and her future she like wants to go to France and so her focus is more on that or does she explore this relationship with her TA that's starting to bloom and it's such a good book I was going through a book slump at the time that I was reading this because it was during my senior year of high school and I just like wasn't having the most 
fun time reading like I was reading books and maybe I enjoyed them while I was reading them and a few months later I would be like eh but this book just made me so happy when I read it it was so cute and fluffy and wonderful if you want to check out a more in-depth review that I did for teen reads I'll leave that linked down below I think I also included it as a Goodreads review so that's probably the link that I'll be leaving down below but if you want more of my thoughts link down below moving on to London boy I feel like I'm saying the phrase moving on a lot I don't know how to transition here guys uh, London boy is your favorite British character so I'm picking an oldie but a goodie and choosing Sirius Black from Harry Potter because who doesn't love Sirius Black? I think the thing that drew me to him the most as a character is the fact that he has such a limited page and screen time within the Harry Potter series but he manages to become such a beloved character and I think a large part of that is because that's the only living family member that Harry has so he really cherishes Sirius and you grow to love him just as quickly as Harry does and he's just makes me so happy and I always think about like what life would have been like if Harry didn't have to deal with Voldemort and all the obstacles that Voldemort puts in his way and if he was just able to have a family with Sirius if we're able to see more of the things he was able to do with Sirius. Sirius also provides a lot of inspiration for Harry, lots of really good lines and just wants to protect him but also like wants him to have fun like I just oh I love Sirius so much and he's just such a great character and Gary Oldman does such a phenomenal job of bringing his character to life. I got Sirius's wand when I went to Univ Universal this past summer and I've just ugh in the time that I reread the Harry Potter series I just absolutely fell in love with Sirius as a character and he just makes my heart so happy. The next track is Soon You'll Get Better and that is a favorite book that deals with a sickness mental or physical. So this was again another very obvious choice for me and I picked the Dear Evan Hansen novel by Val Emmett. Dear Evan Hansen, this story I love so much because I feel like it really hit close to home in the time that I first found it and so when I I learned that it was gonna be adapted into a novel I was so psyched. I think the thing that this novel does really well is that it incorporates Connor's perspective so there's a whole bunch of new information that you get about the characters that you don't have the opportunity to see in the musical because the musical has a very short time span there's only can be so long so there's only so much background that you can get in the characters and it's essentially what's necessary to develop the plot so the book does a really good job at including all of these tiny little nuances and things that you would not know from the musical and the characters feel a lot more developed that way and especially Connor is a character you get to see from his perspective because you know absolutely nothing about him in the musical and you finally get to learn about him and the things that he's going through and why he is the way that he is and that's so enlightening in terms of the discussion of dealing with like anxiety and depression bullying and the relationship that high school students share like all the crazy things that they're going through each character is so nuanced and a lot of the characters that feel like they'd be flat and static characters like Jared and Alana start to really grow and develop throughout the course of of the story and you see that they have their own insecurities they have their own things that they're going through that make them just as three-dimensional as like Evan is or any of the other characters are you get to fully explore all the characters and their journey and the things that they're going through and why they make the decisions that they do and it's such a beautiful story that deals with mental health with grieving and with loss and with anxiety and depression and feeling alone and it just oh it's such a beautiful story and I did a full-length review for the novel if you want to check it out it's like one of my most viewed videos on this channel channel. I, a lot of my Dear Evan Hansen videos are some of my most viewed videos on this channel so I feel like I should just talk about Dear Evan Hansen more and that's how I rake in the views. My necklace is tangled. We're, we're fixing it. Moving on to False God which is the sexiest romance you have read. So this was an, another easy choice and I picked A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Mass. So I'm not a fan of the Throne of Glass series or the Court of Thorns and Roses series. Like I'm not a fan of Sarah J Mass. I know there's a lot of people in the YA world that don't like her. Personally for me I think one of the reasons why I don't like these books is because they're so smutty and I don't like smutty romances I like cute and fluffy romances the books that are like cute and you want to like ah and you know the characters just make you feel happy because they're so cute together and like maybe it's like they're punny and they like flirt with each other like cute stuff like that the, like intense smutty stuff where you're having like 10 page sex scenes not about that so like A Court of Mist and Fury it was rough for me reading this book like it was and I did read A Court of Rings and Ruin and that was also rough I wanted to finish it off and I did it's a hard time I'm not gonna finish the Throne of Glass series I've like done with the smutty romances they're, they're not my thing but False God's a great song off of this album but just not a smutty romance person so next track is You Need to Calm Down a book you fangirl about like no other one inch mentions so here we are talking about the Shadow Hunter Chronicles again because there's there's no other series that I fangirl about like the Shadow Hunter Chronicles than when it's mentioned I, I can talk about the Shadow Hunter 
Infernal Chronicles in day and night. Here's Will Herondale for you right here. I have my paperbacks of the Infernal Devices down here. You can't see them, but I brought them with. I mean, Cassie Clare, like the fact that within the span of a decade, she's managed to create such a big series that's continued to grow and thrive and become more diverse and more rich, like the different characters that she's created and the relationships that they all share. And it's one big, huge universe. And it's only gotten better with age. And there's not a lot of authors that can say that because the minute they try to bring new stuff into the universe, everyone freaks out. They're talking about you, J.K. Rowling and Suzanne Collins. Anyway, Cassie Clare. I mean, The Shadow Winter Chronicles is fantastic. The books are fantastic. It's unfortunate that we can't get a good adaptation of them, but I'm happy with the books. I will always be happy with the books. And I don't, I don't need an adaptation. I don't want an adaptation because what I've been given is not that satisfactory, but the books. Oh, those are fantastic. We have a few more questions left. This tag is getting so long. Oh my goodness. Next track is Afterglow, and that is your favorite villain that you can't help but love. So I'm picking a book that I read recently, and that's Loki, Where Mischief Lies by Mackenzie Lee. I recently became a fan of the MCU, and I never understood the whole Loki thing. I was like, why would anyone like a villain? Like, he's a villain. Why is he not dead yet? And when I found out that he died in Infinity War, I was like, good riddance. And then I actually, like, watched the movies. And when I watched Infinity War, like, as I was going through the MCU marathon and, like, ingratiating myself into the fandom, I was like, I get it. I understand. And my heart felt shattered to a thousand pieces. I was like, Gabby from the path, how could you? And so Mackenzie Lee did such a good job of giving Loki an origin story as a villain and diving into like what makes a person a villain and is there some things that are just sort of predestined that some people just are going to be villains. I don't know why, it seems like it's just a theme that I've been into reading stories like that recently. But Loki, Loki's fantastic. I love how snarky he is. I love the fact that Tom Hiddleston just brings Loki to life so fantastically. I'm so psyched for the Loki series on Disney+. Plus. I love Loki so much. He's always gonna be my favorite villain. And the fact that we got a YA novel about Loki is the greatest thing in the entire world. It made my heart so happy. This book was so fun to read. Me, a book character you want to play in the movie or television adaptation. These are such fun prompts, by the way. I love this. They feel so fun. I feel like I get a lot of the same prompts in different tags that I do. This is a fun one and a new one. So there was two characters that I picked. One is like a like god tier role that I would love to play. The another is like one that feels realistic. Tessa Gray from the Infernal Devices is like my god tier role. I want to be Tessa Gray. I try to embody her ideals and her mindset and her way of life as I live each day and as I wake up each morning. I'm like, I'm going to try to be like Tessa Gray. I mean, like, I don't think that every single day, but like, it's the goal, right? Because she's just such a fantastic character. But again, this implies that there would be a movie or television adaptation of the Infernal Devices. If I was in it, it would be good. Because the minute they start doing shit, I would, I would get angry, you know? I would make sure that things were done right. I love Tessa as a character. I love how bookish she is. She just, we get so many great literary inspired quotes from Tessa Gray too, which I love and to get to say some of those lines, oh my goodness, that would be such a great time. The other character that I would pick that seems like the most realistic and the most fitting at the moment is Kath from Fangirl because, I mean, I'm in that place right now. I'm in my first year of college and I'm a nerd. I love to fangirl. I have a whole YouTube channel in the perfect age for it. It's it's right there. But I also like can't act that well. Like I've done theater, but it's, it's not, but there's better people. But I would love to do it. It would be so much fun and I would work so hard and it would be the best time, but it could never happen. Two more questions left, guys. Let's do this. Okay, it's nice to have a friend. Your favorite friends to lovers book couple. What what did I pick for this? I don't remember. Oh, okay, there we go. I picked another oldie that I love that it's been a while since I've read, so maybe another one that I'll reread, and that's Taylor and Jamie from Queens of Geek. This is another really cute, nerdy couple that are just so sweet. Jamie is such a great character. He's just so sweet to Taylor and is so accommodating to her and accepting of her, and I love that. Essentially, this book takes place at a convention if you don't know what it's about, and Taylor wants to meet her favorite author of, or someone, I think it's her favorite author, like someone, it's a fandom, like she said if there's a fandom that she really loves and is a part of and she gets to meet like the creator of that fandom and you know, there's some like bumps and stuff along the way. It's, it's a multi-perspective novel. There's lots of good things. I've talked about the book before on my channel. You should guys should read it. But Taylor and Jamie are like the really cute, geeky, nerdy couple. Yeah, love them. And so they start out as friends and then they, they grow to be lovers. It's a great time. So perfect, perfect picked. Can you tell that there's some of these books I haven't read in a while, so I'm like stumbling through some of my explanations? Yeah, it's been a while since I've read. Maybe this wasn't the best choice to do this now, but it's fine. And finally, 
The last question on this tag is Daylight, a book that left a lasting impression on you or you could not stop thinking about after you were finished. So I'm gonna just pick my most recent finish and that's Supernova by Marissa Meyer. The conclusion to the Renegade series was a whole thing, man. It was crazy. The series was intense and amazing. And the amount of crazy reveals that went on in Supernova, like I can't even, can't even begin to tell you. It was a whole wild ride. And this series has been around since December of 2015. That's crazy to me that this series has been around since I was a freshman in high school and I'm now in college. Like that's, it's insane to me, man. It took four whole years to finish off that series and I like flew through all of it in a week. I can't, I can't believe it. I really, I really can't. Damn, I can't stop thinking about that book. It's insane and there's just so many really interesting questions that the book poses and that like reveals and everything. It's, it's so good. It's, it's fantastic. It's it's probably one of the best conclusions I've read in a while. I'm gonna be real honest. I don't know if that's saying much because I haven't read a lot of conclusions because I haven't been reading, but like, damn. I would even say it's better than Queen of Air and Darkness and that, that's saying something because you guys all know how much I love the Shadow Winter Chronicles, but I loved this book. It was great. Can't stop thinking about it. Okay, so that was the lover book tag. I feel like this tag was obnoxiously long, but the album is really long. There's lots of good songs on it. And I, wow, I am just, we did this guys. We powered through and we did it. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Gabby. If you want to check me out on social media, all my links are down below. I'm also selling books on my Depop. So if you want to buy anything from me, you want a book, you want to buy one of the books that I've read and talked about on this channel, the link to my Depop is down below. Also, any other links I've mentioned throughout this video are linked down below. Lots of links. Check the description. I hope you all are having a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time in a new one. Goodbye!